Well, I appreciate being here this morning. Animal health and welfare is uh, becoming an increasing concern to all Americans and, frankly, to the world. The global nature of our food network these days put more people at risk <clears throat> from foodborne, foodborne illness than ever before. Some of this risk is in the nature of uh, uh, world trade, the world economy, uh, the interactions we have, frankly, with nations through sanitation, health facilities, or a pale glimmer of what we enjoy in this great country. Some of the nature of the risk is in bioterrorism. I'd argue very, very real threat to our country, much greater than uh, much of the to do about weapons of mass destruction. They pose a particular threat to our urban centers. Some of this risk is in the quality of the food we eat. The nuanced needs we're learning every day that different human populations need to have to avoid, to stay healthy, and promote healthy lifestyles. Uh, my name is Kurt Schramm. I'm a veterinarian from Oregon. Uh, I've been a veterinarian for over 33 years. Worked on large and small animals. <clears throat> lived in the world of food animal medicine and its zoonotic potential. Without question, in my opinion, veterinarians are a little biased to the first line of defense. We've got a good natured discussion going between my MD colleagues and myself here when I'm all done. Uh, I'd argue that public health is nothing more than herd health, herd health for humans. Uh, a lot of epidemiology goes into both. Uh, the profession that's trained most extensively in herd health management is your veterinarian, not your MD. Your MD is trained primarily in individually centric diseases. And veterinarians are trained early on. As a matter of fact, uh, most veterinarians, over 80% of veterinarians are accredited, accredited federal health officials. Again, the first line of defense in many of our farms uh, around the country. I don't think it's any accident in little old uh, state of Oregon, uh, eastern Oregon, a fairly rural portion of my great state, that when uh, public health officials decided to survey who was your most trusted health professional, you know, your doctor, your nurse, or your pharmacist, that uh, overwhelmingly they chose veterinarian. And I think uh, they had it right. The veterinarians play an important role in their health, their own personal health every day. Estimated that I believe 75% of the emerging diseases are zoonotic diseases, diseases that go from animal to human. Again, your veterinarian understands this. Parasitic, infectious, and many others. 80% of the bio threats are zoonotic. There are uh, 1,200 veterinarians on the meat and poultry inspection lines, and many others in research, public health, microbiology, epidemiology, and nutrition. I'd argue the veterinarians are indeed the first line of defense of food safety in this country and on the farm. It's one of the reasons, if I may say so, that America has the safest, healthiest food in the country, in the world. That world is getting smaller, as I alluded to, uh, from Legionnaire's disease to H1N1. And we're reminded about the threats from Africa to Asia that, that can become our threats. Diseases long contained in this country could occur at any time. Diseases like TB, avian flu, brucellosis, cholera, Yoni's disease, chronic wasting disease, and of course, rabies. These pose real threats to us real threats, much greater in my opinion than Al-Qaeda, much greater than the weapons of mass destruction I referred to earlier. Bioterrorism is a very real and potent threat as I alluded to. I'm gratified to see that nearly a billion dollars is being spent to transition the Plum Island Disease Research Facility just off the coast here, Long Island, into a state-of-the-art national bio and agro defense facility. Sole purpose is to deal with infectious diseases the threats to animals. Uh, we are one. We are an animal. Homeland Security employs a number of veterinarians, in case you did not know that. Customs, border officials, science and technology department, and even FEMA. I'd like to spend a moment on uh, our food supply. Uh, I argue, uh, much like the other good representative, that we do have the safest food in the world, despite what our media friends might sometimes report. Most of the issues that have occurred, whether it's Malmine from China, tomatoes from Mexico, or mad cow from Canada, are foreign-born. 
I think that's an important point for Americans to realize that we do have a pretty good food safety network as it is. Yes, there are rogue actors like our peanut buddies in Georgia, but they're rare. They're rare. And I think that's, again, an important piece for Americans to understand and feel safe about the food they, they have. But the standards are getting higher, so we have to respond to that. I think that's why in the House we passed a uh, food safety bill that will hopefully engender greater confidence by Americans in the health and inspection of our, our food. <laughs> Having said that, uh, veterinarians are becoming an endangered species. Uh, there are only uh, 28 veterinary colleges in the United States of America. Uh, there are over 130 medical schools, 26 osteopathic med medical schools, even 57 dental schools. Your teeth are in better shape potentially than you know, your, your food. Veterinary school is a rigorous discipline. For those of you that don't know, yes, we go to an undergraduate curriculum for four years. Yes, veterinary college is four years. Most states have an internship you have to go through before you can practice medicine. And if you want to become an accredited specialist or board certified, you have to spend another two to four years in our great academic institutions in this country. However, unlike many of our medical school colleagues, there is no graduate medical education funding support. And like our human counterparts, most veterinarians graduate with a mountain of debt to make it difficult to go through the curriculum. I'd like to make a quick comment on antibiotics. That seems to be the soup du jour in the media and with many of our friends. Uh, without a doubt, I think in my career, and frankly in the history of the world, the development of antibiotics has been the single most important event to treat disease since gene therapy. Gene therapy will rival that and probably greatly exceed it. But antibiotics is, without question, I think the single most important thing that made doctors and veterinarians go from magicians with elixirs and potions to men and women that could actually cure, treat, and alter the course of infectious disease. Prior to World War II, as many of you know, or Americans, or uh, inhabitants of this great world, we, we get to occupy for a short period of time, die from disease in battlefield wounds. So let's not forget the importance that antibiotics have played in our country, and our, our health across the world. Uh, their judicious use is important. Every veterinarian, every health professional, every MD understands that. Uh, the veterinary medical com community and the American Veterinary Medical Association have had judicious use policies for a number of years now. They work closely with the CDC, infectious disease folks, the FDA, and the USDA to ensure both our human and animal health. Residues are also a concern, not to be confused with resistance. Uh, there are extensive withdrawal policies in place, uh, both uh, mandatory, regulatory, and voluntary, to minimize and avoid at all possible costs any residues that might pose a threat to human health. I would argue at this point in time, and hopefully there'll be more research done, that the concern about antibiotics and resistance in animal medicine as it pertains to human health is somewhat theoretical. The linkages have yet to be conclusively approved. I think it's a very real and genuine concern and more research needs to be done. The issue is are our animal health facilities and farms a reservoir for potentially resistant bacteria? Certainly, it needs to be looked into and be researched. But I would urge, much like the previous speaker, that good scientific information should be getting us there. The world's population is growing. It's going to exceed 9 billion humans by 2050. Global production uh, uh, will need to increase by 50%, our food production, by 50% to meet those demands. And I'd argue that uh, this country your veterinary community, your health professionals, your epidemiologists, uh, all the people that play a role in the USDA and FDA will become an increasingly important actors in making sure that our food supply and our own health is preserved going forward. Thank you very, very much.
take a few questions with my non-controversial remarks. <laughs> Very good. I wish it was this successful back uh, in Congress. So this would be really good. good. Question. Thank you very much. Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs>